That's it. We didn't need the verses. We don't need the verses. You think they can get over all that? No, we'll just play. Is that right? Yeah. Maybe we can just play keys or you just don't want keys? That's the whole thing. We'll have to play keys. Yeah. You want me to try it? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Yeah, probably. Yeah, What? What? The music is like new mind. Yeah, that's new mind. Oh, it's new mind. It's a casino house. Good evening, everybody. Each year at uh, Good Friday and Easter, we take, a, take up a special collection in support of our parish and charities. This year, as an extra option, you can now donate online to our special collection using your phone by scanning the QR code on the screen or on posters around the church. The QR code is set up automatically for Google Pay. Uh, Apple Pay will be coming later this year. Or you can pay uh, via your credit card or debit card. Thank you for your generosity.
And so we gather on this solemn commemoration day. Let us pray for God by shedding his blood for us. Your son Jesus established the Paschal mystery. In your goodness, make us holy and watch over us always. You live and reign, one God forever and ever. Sit now and listen for the word. Our first reading is the uh, fourth of the Suffering Servants songs. We heard the third one last Sunday. And we think of Jesus on this day, but let's also think of the people throughout the world who have been murdered for their faith. Christians, uh, Muslims, Rohingyas, all sorts of people murdered for their faith. So apparently the microphones aren't working. I, I thought I thought that with this one would work, but it doesn't doesn't work. You want I better get, get another one. After yeah. all that speech. You want to stand with <laughs> What I was saying, folks, was uh, we've we're about to hear the fourth of the suffering servant songs of Isaiah. Now uh, could be referring to the people in exile uh, thousands of years ago. It could be referring to Jesus, probably is, but also let's remember the people who are murdered for their faith over the years. Uh, thousands of people, Muslims, Christians, Rohingyas, all sorts of people murdered for their faith. We pray in unison with them. Thank you. Thank you. The first reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant will prosper. He shall be lifted up, exalted, rise to great heights. As the crowds were appalled on seeing him, so disfigured did he look that he seemed no longer human. So will the crowds be astonished at him and kings stand speechless before him 
for they shall see something before him, for they shall see something never told, and witness something never heard before. Who could believe what we have heard, and to whom has the power of the Lord been revealed? Like a sapling, he grew up in front of us, like a root in arid ground. Without beauty, without majesty, we saw him. No looks to attract our eyes. A thing despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with sufferings, a man to make people screen their faces. He was despised and we took no account of him. And yet ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the sorrows he carried. But we, we thought of him as someone punished struck by God and brought low. Yet he was pierced through our faults, crushed for our sins. On him lies a punishment that brings us peace, and through his wounds we are healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way, and the Lord burdened him with the sins of, of all of us. Harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly. He never opened his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep that is dumb before its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law, he was taken. Would anyone plead his cause? Yes, he was torn away from the land of the living, for our falls struck down in death. They gave him a grave with the wicked, a tomb with the rich. Though he had done no wrong, and there had been no perjury in his mouth. The Lord has been pleased to crush him with suffering, if he offers his life in atonement. He shall see his hairs, he shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servants justify many, taking their faults on him. Hence, I will grant whole hordes for his tribute. He shall divide the spoil with the mighty for surrendering themselves to death and letting himself be taken for a sinner while he was bearing the faults of many and praying all the time for sinners. The word of the Lord. Father, I put my life in your hands. Put my life in your hands. In you, O oh Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, set me free. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. It is you who will redeem me, Lord. Put my life in your hands. Those who see in the street run far away from me. I am like a dead man, forgotten in man's heart, like a thing thrown away. But as for me, I trust in you, Lord, I say, you are my God. My life is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of those who hate me. Father, 
I put my life in your A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the Supreme High Priest who has gone through the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as we, if we had a high priest who was incapable of filling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are. Though he is without sin, let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. During his life on earth, he offered up prayer and entreaty, aloud and in silent tears, to the one who had the power to save him out of death. And he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was a son, he learned to obey those through suffering. But having been made perfect, he became, for all who obey him, the source of eternal salvation. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, O Lord of all, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Lord of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedience even to death, and Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Jesus the Nazarene. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. 
So he again asked them, Jesus the Nazarene. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jew, Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. But Peter stood at the gate outside. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made, because it was cold, and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered, I have spoken publicly to the whole world. I've always taught in the synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret, I haven't said a thing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Well, if I've spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I've spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him, bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm. And they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Did not I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to defile so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you say this on your own or have others told you about me? I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish authorities. But as it is, my kingdom's not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. You say that I'm a king? Yes, for this I was born, for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. 
Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wore a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, You do not speak to me. Do you not know that I have the power to release you and I have the power to crucify you? You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Kabata. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, one share for each other, for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to down. So they said to one another, In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there, 
whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine and on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over his spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, and saw that he was, re he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into the side and immediately came blood and water flowed out. Any eyewitness had, an eyewitness has testified and his testimony is true. He knows that he's speaking the truth so that you also may come to believe for this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled not a bone of his will be broken and again another passage says they will look upon him without whom they have pierced after this joseph of arimathea secretly a disciple of jesus for fear of the jews asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to Jesus at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with the spices according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there, and because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Excuse me for reading this, but um, I don't want to give you last night's homily or tomorrow morning's homily, so uh, just make sure it's Good Friday. First thing I want to say is how important, given the political situation at the moment, how important it is to realise that it was very few Jews who actually were present. We heard, we got the hint, didn't we, that... It was preparation day for the big feast of Passover. And not many people, we are told by scholars, would be able to get to that scene that we read in the Gospel. So it's very much a matter of Jewish authorities. It's very much a matter of people who had something to hide or to hold on to. So please don't just think of it, just those rotten Jews, please. Thank you. 
did strike me as we were proclaiming the gospel. Now, I don't know what you think, but my nephew, Anton, says to me, Good Friday is the best day of the year. Well, I'm not so sure. I say to him, well, murder and violent use of power to remain in power is hardly a criteria for the best day of the year. However, Jesus' cruel and excruciatingly painful death leaves us in no doubt that in Jesus, God has become fully human. And that's a great gift on this day to recognise. God's presence on earth was not some uh, oh, imaginative appearance. It wasn't a piece of virtual reality on the internet. His death reveals God's precious love for each one of us. And that's surely one of the reasons that it is Good Friday. So uh, maybe it is the best day of the year after all, although I don't quite want to admit it. I think uh, Easter Day is our best day. Although um, we're in the middle of the three, aren't we? The big three. And you'll note as we go at the end of this ceremony, there's no conclusion. And there was no conclusion last night because there's no conclusion till the end of the vigil. It's a three together. We're in the last weekend. We had a gospel, a passion gospel, and today we have a passion gospel. Last night we had. We celebrated Jesus leaving us his body and blood, didn't we? Saying, do this in memory of my service of you. And now, go and do likewise, he said to us last night. Huh? Last weekend we had a gospel of the Passion, Mark's version of it. Today's version is very different, isn't it? It's John's version. Jesus is very much in charge today. Pilate and others are more on trial than Jesus, who freely goes to his death for the greater good. John's passion is a lot less violent than the other three, and I'm sure offers each one of us hope. And don't we need hope? Each one of us faces difficulties in life, sickness, the cost of living, worrying about paying off mortgages, growing through teenage years to adulthood, the ageing process, to name just a few of the hassles that being human gives us. Alexei Navalny, the murdered Russian, is surely a 2024 example of the Jesus figure for us. Someone like Jesus, whom Russians in this case had murdered because he was a threat to the ruling powers. Doesn't that ring a bell from our gospel today? So on this day, to let us make sure that we don't become anaesthetized, please. That we don't say, oh, well, there's nothing much we can do, and oh, well, uh, that we don't get anaesthetised and, and become indifferent to the horrors of Myanmar, Ukraine, Haiti, Gaza, detention centres, etc., etc., etc. And finally, folks, we see in John's Gospel, written about the year 100, so about 70 years after Jesus' death, we see the changes that were happening in society and in the church were concretized in John's Gospel. At this moment, the church is trying to bring us up to date, trying to bring about very necessary reforms. And we're taking baby steps, it seems to me, through the Plenary Council and through the Synod. 
that there is such strong and at times vicious op opposition to such change and reforms suggests to me that the Holy Spirit is telling us strongly, you're on the right track. Now, the actual changes uh, oldies like me mightn't see, but you youngies certainly will. I just say to each one of us, thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for your fidelity. Stick with it, folks. Please, stick with it. And uh, now we have the veneration of the cross. So thank you, Mr. Coordinator. I was trying to think every year, how do we do this? It's get a bit confusing. Um, like, um, but I was trying to remember how we did it last time without causing confusion for veneration of our cross. I, I bet uh, Father Brian's watching it online to see whether Tia and Neville are doing a good job here today. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to follow the same cue what we did last year to make it seamlessly easy and fast for everyone, starting with the middle aisle. So we have a team of eight people who are going to help uh, holding the cross. So we start with the middle uh, aisle, going all the way to the leading to the uh, chapel, we finish that, and then we, who wants to go left first or right first, we all decide, and we go move this way or this way, and then we finish both the aisles. So just be mindful about the person in front of you, we're not as fast as we were back in the days, but uh, just give people time to touch, kiss, whatever they want to do to the cross. Thank you kindly. Jesus, Jesus. 
not understand what they do. I 
That's a very beautiful hymn, but perhaps the word should be, Are you there when they crucify my Lord? I think it's very important that what we're doing today is not commemorating something that happened 2,000 years ago. Are we there with the detention refugees? Are we there with the ruling Crown Casino? Are we there? The sales of arms keeps the wars around the world going. So not just a matter of were you there, but rather are you there? And to that aim we say thank you to the Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, whom I mentioned murdered because he was a threat to power. Crucifixion keeps on happening. Jesus keeps on being crucified, folks. Not an historical, just an historical event. Thank you. Thank you. 
but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to Special thanks to all our bearers of the cross. They won't need to go to the gym for a month, I think. Uh, fantastic. Now, it's a Catholic show, this, so we have a collection now for holy places and, if you like, also uh, children, children's hospital. So thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, how important the holy places in this time that the guards are war. Wow. Wow. Desperate stuff for many Christians in Gaza as well as Palestinians, folks. Wow, wow. Thank you, Father. Uh, for those who, are, who have not brought any cash, you can donate by Google Pay or your credit card or your debit card. So scan this QR code and uh, you will be taken to the Melbourne Archdiocese website where you can donate either by uh, credit card, debit card, or Google Pay. Thank you.
While the collection's going on, may I say thank you to so many people who have put together our beautiful prayer this afternoon. Things don't just go smoothly because we wish them to go smoothly. They go because a whole lot of people have prepared and worked on our prayers. Last night, today and tomorrow night. We are very grateful. Thank you. Invite us now, those of us who are privileged to have a seat, to uh, stand and we'll have our general intercessions, please. And we turn to our merciful God and present our needs and the needs of all peoples. Please be standing. Let us pray for the church. Loving God, you built your church on the solid foundation of the apostles. May your church persevere in faith, good works, and care for those who worship under her roof. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Pope. Loving God, Pope Francis has been chosen to be the servant of your people. Under his leadership, may the people of God witness in him a true follower of your son. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our Let us pray for the clergy and lady of the world. Loving God, your people long to be in right relationship with you. May the Spirit lead and guide us in our vocation to be ever faithful. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism. Loving God, throughout the world there are many waiting to become members of the Catholic tradition. May our prayers give them courage and inspiration to respond wholeheartedly to your call. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the unity of all Christians. Loving God, your people are separated by their differences, but united by faith in your Son. May we all strive to accept each other and work towards united fellowship. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Jewish people. Loving God, our tradition stems from the Jewish people. May they, as your first chosen people, work with all Christian traditions to be united under the faith of our father Abraham. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ. Loving God, you sent your Son to bring your love and peace to all peoples. Send your Spirit to those who do not know him, granting them peace that comes from following him. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Loving God, in spite of the good works done by your people, there are still many who do not believe in you. Grant that your spirit may open their eyes, minds, and hearts to the wonder of your presence in the world. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all in public office. Loving God, send your spirit to those who govern throughout the world. May their actions and words bring freedom, security, and peace as they seek to guide your people. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in special need. Loving God, our world seeks your peace to banish disease, hunger, loneliness, and insecurity. Grant that our good works will work towards building the kingdom where all people live happily and in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Ever generous God, we pray that you will grant the requests of our hearts, that our world may grow in peace and harmony. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're about to start the communion rite. Suggest while we prepare the altar that you take a seat. Thank you. Now let us stand, please. Together we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done. were consecrated last night so we give thanks for Holy Thursday as you can probably see there are lots and lots of uh, Eucharistic ministers ready to help today so there will be 12 places hey, Carmel do you want to tell us where or just follow uh, no, the, 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 um, communion, the communion ministers know where they're going, so just be patient until they get to their spots. Thank you. Oh, yeah, good idea. And then follow your nose. Sounds like a good idea. Here is the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus. Come and share at his table. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
son. Yeah. 
There is no greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down your life for a friend. There is no greater love, no greater love than to As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Live on in my love. You will live in my love if you keep my commands. Even as I have kept my And to lay down your life for a friend. There is no greater love, no greater love than to lay down your life for a Ever generous God, thank you for restoring us, bringing us life through the death and resurrection of your son Jesus. Please preserve in us the work of your amazing love so that partaking in this special mystery we may have life to the full and build up your kingdom right here, right now. We pray through Jesus Christ, who loves us dearly forever and ever. Amen. I preempted uh, saying thank you to all the people who were involved with uh, putting together our beautiful prayer today. Many of them probably were involved with uh, last night and will also be involved with the Easter Vigil. I want to also say thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, no good if the uh, 50 or so people who uh, follow the six P's, I think you all know what the six P's are. I'll tell you afterwards if you don't know. It's not proper for me in the sanctuary to say the six P's, but uh, proper preparation at any rate. So thank you. And thank you for being here and praying so well, particularly those with Little East. It's a fantastic effort, so congratulations. And uh, may you enjoy the rest of the day. I think North Melbourne might just win. You just never know. You just never know. Just a reminder, in an hour and a half's time, for crying out loud, just, in, just time to grab, go home, grab a quick cuppa and come back. There's a prayer tonight at six o'clock. And tomorrow night, may I strongly recommend your coming to the 7 p.m. vigil. That's the whole conclusion and the whole oh, rationale of it all. So uh, fantastic ceremony. Seven o'clock right here in the church. Now, if you... And uh, if you're able to get up in the middle of the night, go to KPR and have their dawn service too. That's probably even better. But oy, oy, oy. who are me to say that? But uh, the uh, dawn seems to be the time especially. But let's give a big thanks to uh, our parish priest who's doing two vigils, for crying out loud. Uh, one I find exhausting, so uh, to do two is just uh, beyond the beyond. So good on him. Let's stand, please. May the abundant blessing of our generous God descend upon us all.
have honoured the death of your son today in the hope of resurrection for us all. May pardon come, comfort be given, and faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. You are our God and Saviour forever and ever.